All right, so let's look at a problem. Let's say you want to start at 1, and we'll move up in steps just between negative 1 and 5. So you can sort of expect it'll go something like this, all the way to 1,000. And we want to stop if it gets to 1e6 steps here and it had, we haven't reached a thousand yet so if we're like here but we've got to the 1e6 steps then we'll stop it so how would we accomplish this and what why would we even want to be able to do this well one reason is we for example in a, an artificial intelligence problem you may have a couple of options and one way that you can approach this is by randomly stepping down through all of the different options. So you could take that, take that, take that, take whatever steps you're going to through. So something like this could be constructing a input uh, that has some randomness in order to maybe change exactly what the output's going to be each time but get you closer to this because you're favoring uh, a higher number the average between the negative one and five is right here in the middle at two so on average you're going to increase about at a slope of two this can be seen like in cases where ants are wandering they'll pick sort of a wandering a random appearing path just avoiding obstacles but taking some randomness in order to introduce variety in the results. So if you wanted to mimic an ants movement you could use a method like this. So let's look at solving this problem in MATLAB. So if we go here, first we want to say our point is 1. That's our starting point and we want to say points equals point just to start this will be the matrix of all of the points and we're going to loop for n is random 1 1 e 6 and the reason I would want to do this is because I want to say that each step I'm just going to add this value in and if I've gotten to the point where I've reached 1e3 or greater then I stop. So here I'll say points of length of points plus 1 equals points of length of points plus n. So that way I'm going through this matrix of random numbers and each time I'm doing the next random number add it to my previous point to get the new point. This n though we want to be between negative 1 and 5 and rand is automatically between 0 and 1. So I want this matrix to be multiplied by 6 and subtract 1. So the multiply by 6 will make it from 0 to 6 instead of 0 to 1. And then minus 5 will, or minus 1 will make it from negative 1 to 5, right? So this way I can get that uh, range between negative 1 and 5. And I could do this a ton of other ways. I could say for n is 1 to uh, 1e6. Just comment this out. And then say plus rand of 1, 1 times 6 minus 1. There you go. I could pick a random number each time, or I could use n, my iterating value, to do this. So I'll just stick with using n. 
And now I want to say if I've reached 1e3, so if this is greater than 1e3, then break. All right, so let's see, look over one more time, make sure it's doing what we want. So we got our starting point, this is one. Then we got all our points and we just generate a matrix. First equals point, and I wouldn't actually need to put this in a matrix, it'll automatically do that because it's MATLAB, right? But just for me visually, I'll do that because it's easier for me to think about it that way. So for n equals rand of one comma one e six. So is that what I wanted? Uh, so make it stop if it gets to one e six. Good. And I want it to be between negative one and five. So multiply by six to get a span of six and then subtract one to get it down one point. So then I can make the next point in points. So length of points plus one equal to the previous point, points of length of points, and then add that to the random number in this matrix from above. And then if this value is greater than or equal to 1000, then break. And I'll just do a plot here of points. And if, or let's see, let's say in this case, we want to keep track of if we actually made it through or not. So I'll say a equals one. And then if I'm breaking out, then a equals two. So if a equals equals one, then I would like to do a disp didn't break out, didn't get to one e three, stopped in 1000 steps or stopped in 26 steps. And then else disp and commonly what you'll do is you'll have if else if for every condition and then your else will only be if you have something totally unexpected then you can do an error or something like that so unexpected result and so for example if you forgot that you were overriding a somewhere and so you made a3 uh, if we just did else disp broke out stopped before or let's say got to 1e3 before 1e6 steps okay if we just said else and then this then if we had somehow accidentally changed a equal to three or something else somewhere in the code, then we wouldn't know that. Whereas if we do else if else, then in any case, if we got something we didn't understand uh, because we accidentally overrode it or something, then we can use the else to handle that situation. So I'll see either it didn't break out, it broke out or unknown. And because this code is so short, realistically, we don't need to do that. But this is a good habit to get into. And uh, then we can plot points. So let's run this and see what it looks like. So broke out got to 1000 before 26 steps. And like we sort of expected, it's got a slope of about two by Look at this point, starts at zero, zero, or actually it starts at uh, one, one. And I've got X 255, Y 497. So it's about twice the height as it is the length there, this rectangle. So yeah, we, uh, we got there long before we got to 26 steps. We got there in about 5 E 2. So quite a ways away. So yeah. That's how you could accomplish this problem. Uh, this is an example where you would limit 
basically you want to just say you only want to go so many times. So you could use like a while loop to do this. You could change it. Like I said, you could change this to one colon one E six and then use the random number here. All of those are perfectly valid ways of approaching this. Uh, you have lots of different options. So hopefully that makes sense and you learned something. Thanks.